beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep his commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21. John 14 21. The clearest proof. Don't just say I fear God. No, there are exact parameters to measure. I love the kingdom. It doesn't leave you to confusion. You can know here and now, right now. I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years. I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised. The Bible says, he that hath my what? So it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keepeth them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result... He that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come, I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I there are so many believers, talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakatalabakorasidabaladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5 verse 3. Can we read together? One to read. For this is the word love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, there's the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh-uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you, can, you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall. 
between well believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again but there are all kinds of things we do and we believe listen please and please and I, I don't I don't mean this I don't mean this to um, to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ but I've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message if it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for God concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience why then is there hellfire if everything is like that God must apologize to Ananias and Sapphira don't you think so was it not in the New Testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving God make the lake of fire hallelujah seven churches in, in the book of Revelation when God began to talk to them he was focused on their works I know your works I know your works is, is that in your Bible brothers and sisters be careful hallelujah honor the body of Christ but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically it can lead people into error there are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance believing are you getting my point let me share with you something that will surprise you dl moody many of you have read about him right dl moody was a mighty evangelist of god and he came and preached for decades when dl moody died sir after 10 years they decided to do a like a little census to follow up the converts of dl moody please listen this is this is not an exaggerated statement hallelujah and they found out that only one out of 10 converts of dl moody were still standing in the faith are you getting what i'm saying i respect him i honor him hallelujah it was look at such a great man after laboring they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings only one out of ten remained safe and were still in the faith we're not talking of people who built ministries those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of God what happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those meetings and then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing sides that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I've just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he's a king. hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord we have allowed people to do all kinds of things there are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones their laptops they watch it and the moment the Holy Spirit wants to convict them they say I'll never feel guilty I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus tomorrow they go back and do it again somebody goes come on now let's let I, you know you trust me I love you too much not to tell you the truth People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference 
between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. Hallelujah. Paul, the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles. If his gospel was so pleasant, I have a question. Why did they stone him? Have you ever wondered? Why did they stone him? What did he say that got the people angry? That they stoned him? Hallelujah. Why did they behead James? It wasn't just because they were angry at them. There was a content that we are missing today. And that's the reason. I'm telling you, this is why many believers are not powerful. Anything comes and just throws us down. Because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined. Now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of god is preaching and you get up and say i know better that's foolishness i hope you understand that god is granting us maturity but i am just telling you that as much as the grace message is good it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth there are many other components of the kingdom what's the formula for water the chemical formula for water is what h2o is that true just add one more um, what now of oxygen it becomes H2O2 what is that are you seeing that same thing that can be water now for adding something wrong it can become poison at once and kill you everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that Jesus kept them hallelujah I'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you God is going to trust you with ministries you will have your churches please don't be afraid of being criticized you must stand and teach the truth are you getting me I remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said please um, I have a problem with you praying for people how do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them is that really true I just sent the person my text. I said, I love you. We see from different perspectives in the kingdom. And God will help us. We operate from the perspectives that we see. And that was all I said. Praise the Lord. Ay, ay, ay. Time is a revealer. I hope you know that. Time. Time. There are some things you should never talk about. Time. Just allow time to pass. Time. That's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet. Hmm. People just say, you will never make it. And God never responds. And you are saying, God, God has already spoken. Time is a language in this realm. It can speak so loud. Brothers and sisters, when we started this thing, you are seeing. I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing. They say it won't last. I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors. Those of you who were around those times, you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom. Everybody was doing everything. People carrying briefcases and ladies all around them. I am this, I am that. People scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that. And some of us look like fools. But he has chosen the foolish things. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Oh, 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 listen, if I mislead you and I teach you error, the God of heaven is going to judge me. 
Even if I don't love you, I love my destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, ask for the ancient paths and walk in it. I'll never forget one minister. I've, I've shared with you the story. That guy's ministry was grounded. Things were tight. There were all kinds of demonic things. But that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem. No, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing was happening. And one day he summoned courage to come for counseling. So as soon as he entered, I saw a spirit enter with him. And he just came, just sat down. And then he was telling me all kinds of things. Things are not exactly working, this and that. I said, my brother, I need to pray for you. Ah! Guy felt embarrassed, his, his ego, you know. And you know, we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls. You just believe that it means God has finished working on you. Is that true? And I was going to pray for the person. The last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees. Right? Scattered the place, scattered the room. And I, I, I said, look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things. This guy got up, went back to his ministry and boom! Goodness! How a man can sit down in ignorance for years. Whereas in two minutes of humility, your destiny can open up. How, how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance. Their salvation is closer to them than they can ever see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can save. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness there is nothing wrong to accept that oh this is what i used to believe but i've seen clearer now lord help your body in the name of jesus christ let's hurry up we're still talking about how to secure favor with god we have to rush Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the save, the um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we are talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James five verse four tells us this is the victory that overcomes, and it says even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God. I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him. And his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your paths. And then verse 7 says, it's a warning. It says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Be not wise in your own understanding. That means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding. But he said, fear the Lord. And that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words, that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It takes faith. Hallelujah. It takes faith in God. It takes faith in God. Very important. You must trust in the Lord. Psalms 125 verse 1. It said, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Very important. They that trust in the Lord. When you have faith in God, it gives you stability. Through all of the 
boisterous winds that blow around our lives. Where are we? Okay, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed or shaken, but abides forever. Do you trust in the Lord? What is faith first and foremost? Let me tell you. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Faith comes from the Greek word pistis. Hallelujah. What that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction. Are you getting my point now? If you have not acted on faith, it's called belief. It's not called faith. Are you getting me? Belief is just your persuasion. When you act based on that belief, it becomes faith. So the Bible says, have faith in God. Become persuaded so much in the character of God that you take steps based on that conviction. So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action. Write it and never forget because faith comes when you hear the word of God. So it starts with revelation. Then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion. You are convinced about this reality you just heard about. Convinced enough to take steps. Then the Bible calls that Without the action component, is called belief. What many people are doing that they call faith is belief. That means not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof that you don't trust God. Not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof, biblically, that you do not trust God. So many people hear the word of God and we claim to be convinced. Let me tell you, in this life, the moment you are convinced about a thing, action is almost automatic. Hallelujah. A guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until it pushes him to say, Sister, please, after Koinonia, I'll be at this door. Will you mind passing there? That's action. Three guys saw the lady and said, wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, it's fine and she likes God praying. It's nice when a fine lady is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But he was convinced and he said, look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who kept saying, me, even me, God knows from the depths of my heart, this is my wife. And you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife. I just spoke about marriage. Some of you have woken up now. Ah! Brothers, you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar. Hmm. That statement you make at the altar is so implicating. It will take a long time for you to see the the significance of that vow. Don't let your type deceive you. You are standing there just talking. Will you do this? Everybody, you are just telling everybody, I'm getting married. After the marriage, the rubber will hit the road. Your eye will clear. My friend, the Jimmy says, love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. Praise God. So let's hurry up. Number three, I'm going to shock you now. You want to secure favor with God? The third principle is the tithe. T-I-T-H-E. Ah. How many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that tithe helps you to secure favor with God? Even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe if you don't pay your tithe you don't pay your tithe and see whether God will bless you and you see the anger with which the man is preaching and God tells you please please pay this tithe 
every church every ministry their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom my prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people ah that would have been a terrible way to live i would have been frowning at you people every week what did you drop last week you know. there are many men of god who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience can i be sincere with you many men of God don't tithe. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man, that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just, no, 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 no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say, it's blessed. Where you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer. It is alive and active in the earth. Hallelujah. I must talk about this. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt because everything we owe belongs to God. Your tithe is an acknowledgement. It's a documentation of your gratitude. You're saying, Lord, in obedience to you and for your faithfulness, I bring 10%. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you see it on, on the down. I'm done with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, oh, Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens, you really think we are running this ministry from... The, look, you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. At least you don't know your neighbor's own, but you know your own. You can't run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to get and all of that and we were just saying oh lord we thank you because we are tight as we are faithful till today i was sharing with you pastor till today we do not know the person we just got an alert 1.5 million by an unknown person we do not know into the ministry accounts whereas that's somebody's labor somebody who is collecting fifty thousand. how much is his salary that calculated for more than one year for being faithful in time I think I was talking to the protocol department. They went to purchase something in Abuja. And then I was talking to them. The mixer. We just got a better mixer. Very good one. And then I, I was talking to them. I think it was someone on my birthday. Pastor. Someone just, right? Yes. And the person just said, ah, they just paid some 
money for their family that they were hoping, you know, 3.4 million naira, and the person just said, oh, well, thank God for all the words you are speaking, the things you are teaching us, and was just sending the tithe and all of that. Let me tell you, when you see what we are doing, because I know many of you sit there and wonder, how do these people really get money? Yes, God is faithful, but what is the one plus one of it? Let me tell you, the one plus one of it is what I'm teaching you here. The tithe. If you are not a faithful tither, God is not authorized to bless you. Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a tither, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your time, your giving are the seeds for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing? You are saying it's not correct. It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you're securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income that secures open heavens, favor with God. Tithe because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with a lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their monies for sickness? All their monies for no, no open heavens. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. To be faithful in tithing. Say it again in the name of Jesus. See, the truth is many of us are not consistent. Our tithing life is up, down, up, down. That's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up. And then tomorrow, it's not God's fault. J.C. Penny, many of you have heard about him. J.C. Penny, one of the multi-billionaires who love God. He was tithing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped tithing. That was how his business just was died like that to a point that it was almost crashing. And he said, wow. And he started tithing. And that was how he, he got himself back. You better believe what I'm telling you. Many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries. They are collecting 150,000, yet they cannot afford 5,000. You ask them for 5,000, they will almost kill you because a devourer has eaten everything. In one day, two tires just patch and all the money has gone. Just when you are coming, something happens. Arrows that fly by day. And they now look and they say, sorry, you need, you need this and that. You will be spent and all the money goes. Then the moment the money goes, the person gets well by himself, the devourer. And you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice. Many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6, 
to try to solve something that faithfulness in tithing. Many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in tithing. A solid building, a solid structure. Small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the thing. Back to square one. There are even those that physical money disappears. Have you heard that story? Somebody keeps one million, he comes back and finds 780,000. Someone came for counseling. I've never had that thing. The woman said, Rats eat her money. No, serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. Rats. You come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil tithing. I think it was either Paul and or, or, or Bishop David Oedeko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to, I think, um, destroy a woman or capture one family. And the woman shouted. She took her tight booklet, lifted it up and dropped it on the ground. And said god watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me at once confusion came on the people they were afraid and that was how they left brothers and sisters what you do not believe will not work for you oh i believe the word of god i'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of jesus are you getting blessed Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone let's read. One to read. is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in. Seven million and they just calculate. Use calculator. Seven hundred thousand need. Go and give that man of God. I'm not stupid. Abba, seven hundred thousand. And you see the person arguing. And within three weeks, he has spent over one million naira on his health. And robbers will come and put a gun and say, we saw through the jazz that we used that there's seven million in this. I say, no, it's only four. No, now slap me and say, truly, it's, it's seven. Where is it? He said, that's it here. Take it, take it and preserve my life. Whereas, the tithe of it. Have you seen how many of our family members put us in trouble? I say this, many of us keep wondering, why is my father walking? Why is my mother walking? The truth is that they are all walking. They've never been driven from job, but not even a house to build. The mysteries of the kingdom. There is no favor. The heavens are closed. So many believers operating under closed heaven. There are many ministries. They are so tight, no supplies. They beg for everything. Squeeze people. Put people, workers and all of that under every kind of pressure. Because the man of God is not tithing. The people are not tithing. The ministry is not tithing. Dr. Mike Mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down. It was going down so bad and he checked. And then he called the finance department. He said something is wrong. We are not doing something right. What is wrong? Hallelujah. And the financial secretary said, Well, sir, um, for about three months now, we've not been paying tithe because the bills are enormous. And honestly, if we have to pay tithe, you may, we may shut you down from TV and all of that. And my good doctor said, Because of that, you stop paying the tithe. That means we are going to crash to zero. The day we stop paying tithe as a ministry, I give you one to two months. It will never happen. That's why I have the confidence to say it. Maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator. Or no chairs. Ah! No. As surely as the God of heaven lives. We have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? 
is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tithe. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. 0, 0, 0, 0, 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely because the heavens are closed. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men, no. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances, so I'll stop here for you. We're going to pray just in one minute before we continue. Many of us need to repent because the financial stress in our family is not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, I would have been collecting 200,000 now. Instead of 150, my life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect 1 million under a closed heaven. And you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful, Titan. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick, koinonia. Is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were open before, they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God they are not even there again your shop that used to sell nothing is selling again because you think you don't touch for your business now the heavens are closed look at many of our parents you buy a new gadget you bring the machine everything breaks down this is the devourer brothers and sisters let's take responsibility tonight and say Lord we cry for help the finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses. Paying for damaged cars. Paying for all kinds of things. Pray and say, Lord, I want your favor. From tonight, I repent. I receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter. I realize that this is the key. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you read. I don't care what your level of anointing is. I don't care how hardened your heart is. If you want to experience favor with God, I'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter. You must design a system around your life. If there are needs in your life, that's the more, that's, that's the more reason to tie. Don't say the needs are too much. Man of God is because you don't know. I have so much needs. I must do this and that. Touch your way out of that trouble. Touch your way out of that trouble. Eating your tight will only get you deeper. I promise you, you can apply every business principle you know. Fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family. But you be faithful towards tithing. And watch God turn any situation around. It doesn't take time. Commit God into your life. Anything God is involved in must succeed. Many of us, God is not committed in the affairs of our lives. I don't want to know what you are going through now. Tight your way out of it. Secure the favor of the Almighty. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please let me challenge you. Create a system. If you do internet banking, you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever, or if it is here, you tight. The, the, the ministry's account details are available to it. If you do internet banking, transfer it immediately. Otherwise, buy envelopes. Buy envelopes. I always have a stash of envelopes. Praise God. The treasurer is here. We created a system. I don't even see the tight. As it is counted, we take it and, 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 and sow it to the appropriate ministry. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through? Didn't they go to school? Didn't they get all the degrees? Look at everything. See how helpless people are. Because they know not, neither will they understand. And the Bible says they grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Let's finish the last part. How do you activate and secure favor with men? I must talk about this. Spoke about three things right now. To secure favor with God. That number one, you must have the fear of God. The fear of the Lord. Number two, you must have faith in God. You must trust him. Number three, you must be a consistent titan. But when it comes to finding favor with men, the rule is different. If you have been sleeping, this is the time to wake up. I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight. Daniel chapter 1. Open our eyes, oh God. Daniel chapter 1. Help us. Grant us grace. Someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share with you something very powerful. How do you secure favor with men? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and besieged it verse 2 and the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of China to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God verse 3 and the king listen now spake unto Ashpenaz the master of the eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel so the king is inviting some people to stand before the king hallelujah and the kings and of the king's seed and of the princes verse 4 everyone read one two read children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability, take note, in them to stand in the king's palace. It takes an ability. Are you seeing that? He said those who have what? Ability to stand in the king's palace. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured. But notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now. I want all the people that walked in his palace. Because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. There were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully. Favor is the currency to get money.
Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men. Never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling, those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva, Baba. Write this down. Solve problems. Then write three ellipses. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. When I solve this, we'll tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom. The ultimate key, brothers and sisters, hear me. Every man in scripture who became great became great because he was favored he found favor with men and every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor is someone getting what i'm saying joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems i say this all the time and some of us neglect it write that word down ability ability this is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness gender notwithstanding background notwithstanding Age, notwithstanding. Nationality, notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Until you solve a problem, you remain insignificant and unnoticed. If you are not providing solution, brothers and sisters, nobody needs you. The world is so desperate for solutions, they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems. The greater problems you solve, the greater you become magnetic. Please understand this. If you think you will, people will invite you into their presence, just because they like you or because you are a Christian, you are dreaming. Wake up. Hello? <laughs> you know, many of us have this funny understanding that because I'm serving God, one day, great men will call me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Start reading your Bible very carefully and you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that. There was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king. I have a question. What will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you and bring you into greatness? Are you getting my point? The reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety. Please hear, me, hear what I'm saying. All men are equal, but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others. Your ability, that anointing, that skill, that grace, that gift is what you will use to access favor with men. There are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me. 
and I know that if not for the grace of God there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people not at this level of my life are you getting what I'm saying there are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and I know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices the gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men your gift can add to your age your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon we must understand this then I will show you how God lifts people in the kingdom say in the name of Jesus I have an ability that will bring me before great men say one more time in the name of Jesus I have an anointing I have grace I have an ability that will bring me before great men I have entered places today that my father may never enter perhaps I have entered places today that with all humility my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime because of the gift of God look when you possess this ability they told Jesus they said all men seek for thee all men they will pay you for it they will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you. And you will be surprised. You're wondering, my goodness. But there is an ability. And because they need it, they will look for you. There are 7 billion people in the earth. But more than 90% of those people are looking for solutions. That's big business, brother. If you can become a solution provider, you become magnetic. See the darkness in Nigeria. Look, let me tell you. If you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed, spit it on 20 people and let them get healed and you will see the level of intelligent people who come and stand for days waiting to be healed. Many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth. Please listen. The Spirit of God is moving in this place right now because I, I want to share something very powerful. There is an anointing you have that can bail you forever. There is an anointing. The ability that makes you to stand before kings. You will not be the one looking for them. The Gentiles will come, not to you, to your light. That's what they want, not you. If you think people come because they like you, there are many people who come for Koinonia not because they like me. Oh. You will be amazed to see how many people came to Jesus. King of the Jews, you are this and that. When it looked like Jesus' ministry was nose diving, they said, I beg, crucify him, let his blood even be upon our head please listen let me just advise you if you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality many people will love you because of what you carry are you getting my point see Baba Lama, there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life. I will never be a failure in this life forever. I know it. I know it. Rich men have problems that I can solve. Ah, yes. Yes. Great men have problems that I can solve. I cannot solve every problem. But brothers and sisters, there are problems I can solve. Now, watch this. Let me explain to you the equation, what I call the equation of greatness. 
tithe, you will be so blessed. Just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 1, media, project it. I love the Lord. When I did this study, my heart dropped. I said, oh God, I'm sorry for all the times that I kept blaming you for so many things. Ecclesiastes 9. Eleven, verse eleven. Did I say one? Eleven, please. Verse eleven. Everybody, please read. I returned and saw under the that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now Okay, but time and chance. Replace the word chance with opportunity. Are you ready now? One to read. I want you to replace the word time with the word seasons. Are you ready now? One to read. But seasons and opportunities happen to them all. But seasons. Like the hand of a clock. It has been designed by the sovereign act of God that for every man upon the surface of the earth there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day time and opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Time and chance did the bible say it happens to some happens to everybody that means there is a guarantee please listen somebody's deliverance is coming there is a guarantee based on the word of god that a day must come if god is god where time and chance you know how they do cooperative society five of us bring twenty twenty thousand it's now your own turn it's now your own turn and i start smiling although it's not my turn because i know that my turn is coming for sure and the bible says time and chance so in the equation of greatness we are bringing the constant factors and then we work on the variables we are doing a little mathematics here are you getting my point it says time and chance this one no devil can stop it no herbal is from your village you don't need to pray about it he said time if you are under the sun time and chance happeneth to them all. ah i show you a mystery ah so time that means a time will come in my life whether i'm prepared or not whether I pray for it or not, whether I fast for it or not, a time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities. Whether I see it or not is irrelevant. God's justice must be done. Therefore, the Bible for once us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this is where a lot of people miss it. We keep focusing on looking at the day. The Bible says it will come. Remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness. And begin to focus on taking advantage of that day. It will come. The equation of greatness. Let's look at. Um, okay. Greatness therefore. In the kingdom. Comes. By number one. God merging seasons and opportunities together and then number two you finding favor 
by securing that opportunity I'm going to explain myself let me have somebody please okay Aaron come hallelujah watch this let's assume this is spiritual timing and according to God's justice system okay stand here Aaron please. that this time is going to keep moving are you seeing it now and that a day will come it may take a long time but that a day is going to come when it will come to Aaron and if Aaron misses on that opportunity it will keep moving again are you getting what I'm saying that's why if God wants to help you in life he restores yes not what you lost yes he tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made you can remedy it he never said I will restore the goods because they are not necessary once there is time and those seasons is somebody understanding what I'm saying now the problem with the body of Christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison the divine transaction started happening and the wine presser came out although the one presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remain in the wilderness until his season of appearing there is, john was sharpening himself in the wilderness when the season came he came out and he completed his assignment one time Jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of 3 years. 30 years. Read all the books. Knew all the law. Did everything and there was flawless victory within 3 and a half years. So there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and saying, man, I like this Jeep. Goodness. Ah! BMW this and that. Ford Explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming I claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the Bible says in Israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent God will send people specifically to you. Ah, and when you take advantage of that season, that is it. You are open to a dimension of grace. I have studied almost every great ministry I admire. And I found out that in the history of that ministry, something always happened. Something happened at the Kairos season. And the men plunged into it with revelation. And boom! never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you ah i feel the anointing of the spirit if you sit down and you are wondering kai this house one day we are coming when will this come no 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 you never see me bother you insult yourself when you do that 
many young people here our dream is car right car let me buy car and you are trying to save how much can you save for the car you want i'm teaching you a higher law get out of all those 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 ways of frustration and misery that's why many people cannot give god glory they suffer for everything in their life come and adopt the kingdom's way there is a higher dimension there is a higher way believe me look let me tell you i'm a businessman i've read many business books so don't you think i'm just talking nonsense i know what i'm saying hallelujah when that kairos moment comes in your life when it comes in your ministry some people are snoring through the night the time will pass they wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of Jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of God the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing uh -uh, leave your father and look god is bringing you to a point i don't care what degree you graduated with I don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that I'll never be a failure in this life never so every time I spend in prayer I'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to koinonia. The person will be dying of tuberculosis or something. It's like that. That's how it works. There is always something you can exchange for. And God will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming, somebody will be bringing koinonia messages. That one is God's part of the equation. While that is happening, I'm praying in the secret place. Shekata baba baba. Rakata baba. Greater wisdom, oh God. You can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm. Hi. If Joseph knew, if Joseph knew, all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said, Oga, okay, it is within your bail me. Imagine the guy that bought Joseph. When he was shaving Joseph, little did he know. He would have earned himself a position forever. Imagine those who were with the pri in the prison with Obas and Joe, the night he would come out. If they had known that he would just come out never to return. They would have said, Augusta, let's pray. Father, bless this man. So that at least he will remember them. Beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this. You can't speak English very well. You can't do this and that and that. Beware, let me tell you. You know why? Because if you are not, if you don't take time. Please look at me. Let's just focus. God is just doing his thing. If, if, you are, if you don't pay attention, can I tell you the truth? A day will come, you will find out that the same person you saw today, you looked at her, said, Mary, what is there? You will open an office that you feel from for two weeks. There are people today who are angry with me. They are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another. And at those times, they could say a lot of things. Call me when they wanted. But I was doing something they were not doing. We were all laughing and joking. And today, because of the difficulty in reaching me, they pick offense. It's not my fault. I refuse to remain at that level. I intend to grow. Be nice to people today. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, for those of you who look at people in Koinonia, and when we say greet one another, you just turn. You don't know who you are turning. Time and chance. He may come from a poor family. He may have one ton sandals. But let me tell you, time, the word you are sharing is sharpening you for that time. A day will come. There is something God has put in you. This is the justice of God. This is why every man can be great. Time, 
and chance happens to them all the day it happened to our parents they were not prepared they were there talking about others criticizing others and the clock passed and it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time took advantage of it and they said ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking he was drinking but he did something with his opportunity now he's a billionaire he's a pastor he's advancing the kingdom let me tell you something that happened in 2008 i believe i was in accra for a retreat and something happened hallelujah no i think 2007 or so i was in accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of god for the things that he was going to do and while i was praying my money had finished i had nothing not even to eat not even to pay for the hotel where i was having the retreat for that night i finished praying i was reading a book within the gates it's a divine revelation book when i read it, the spirit of god just told me stroll around and i came out i started strolling i was walking like a fool time and chance i want to share with you testimonies now the holy ghost just said just keep walking i was walking like a fool i didn't know where i was going up to 25 minutes i was just walking the next thing i saw a signboard welcome to accra city campus and the holy ghost said enter immediately i entered the first person i'll meet is the src president and the guy listen the guy looked at me and the moment he looked at me he said how are you sir when he shook me he just took his hand he said jesus he said can you come to my office miracle number one listen listen true story i want to tell you i know what i'm saying i'm not just making noise when this guy brought me to the office we didn't speak more than five minutes he started shaking time and chance and they ordered a meal i first ate the meal and then we attended their fellowship i sat down quietly after they attended their just like the campus has friday fellowship when they finished i went to his office watch this the moment i started talking i started talking at about two four we rounded up that meeting past nine when we started talking the university escort started coming to the office one by one they would come this one would fall under the anointing and remain there it was in that place i inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in accra in that accra city campus on that day i'm still in touch with that gentleman again his life changed there was they have their prophets like their maybe what you would call an fcs president Yes, after the, the, the president would finish, he invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program. And it was a powerful and explosive program. I was even on radio. The radio and they did an interview. I think that was when we traveled with Bala, Alex and a team of other people. Listen, that's not the whole story. When I finished that night, the people came together past nine. They raised an offering of maybe equivalent in Naira now of maybe 30,000 and they gave me i didn't even know how to find my way back they directed me i found my way paid for that night and i ate a very good meal i said it works i remember in the room i was screaming i said come on not it has equal value in any land you don't need to know nobody all this godfather nonsense let me tell you get out of it right now if god is on your side there is nothing nothing you cannot get listen the night i was supposed to leave those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel it was within three or four days their lives changed they said what sort of person i taught them on the kingdom it was an unusual open heavens so the last day they invited me again i prayed with them strengthened all the people you know bless them they had impartations and all of that and they raised me money again an equivalent of maybe say 50,000 and then I returned back who would have helped me I don't have any uncle but the gift of a man the time and chance is God's own equation leave it for him God is speaking to someone tonight you have been crying and say Lord when will it come God said forget about the issue of when are you prepared are you seeing that God delaying seasons is an act of his love 
that thing you have been calling delay you are not prepared if it had come before this message you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years you open a shop nobody's coming god is saying uh -uh, i don't want you to miss be careful what you call delay some things may be the hand of god your job you didn't get the job god said i i don't want you to struggle there is something you can know you go for a job in four months you have become one of the executives it does not take time if you can solve the problem you will rise to the top all the days of my appointed time i will wait but while i wait i will sharpen the knife i will pray in tongues while i wait i will keep studying the word i know i'm going to stand before kings i must have content to give them i won't talk like i'm talking before weak men i will stand before presidents a day will come it will be a privilege to air koinonia a day will come we will not just have one or two tv stations there will be many one billionaire can sponsor it for years but while that time comes we will pray we will fast we will travel let them call you a fool because there's no car what is car see a man came to mike modok because of something that he did he was begging mike mudok to buy a car for him mike mudok said i don't need it he said i i entered a covenant with god that every year till you die i'll be buying you the latest benz car one day i was passing around abuja and i saw all the mighty houses they were building around my tama and the holy ghost told me do you know how many of your houses are here no i'm serious god told me he said you will only build in life just for the formality the gift of a man the owner of that building will need me one day darkness is a mystery that announces light the world will be too dark one day they will need the anointing they will need it i'm telling you many of you have not been respecting what you carry i know what i carry i know what i carry it's an anointing of the spirit the nations can never 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 they can never deny the effect they may not like me but there is an anointing for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time i'm fasting i may believe I may so carry, but there is an anointing. My father could not enter, but there is an anointing. There is wisdom. There is the gift of God. And I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. There is a price to pay. I don't blame anybody. Left now is to sharpen my ability. Higher. I may not speak the kind of English you want, but when I say it, an anointing will leave. You can deny my English, but you cannot deny the anointing. There is something. See, this is what I'm training you to become. There is a sharpening. You may not see it now. The world will need you. You will collect a salary of maybe 100,000, but your boss will sow a seed of 5 million to get out of trouble. Ma teka labaka protoko shubata. your ability listen we are soon going to pray your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness look at me Aaron is here let me share with you his testimony permit me Aaron a bit for years many of you know how skilled Aaron is for years the kind of job he was trusting God for would not come I know times when things will get a bit painful for him and we kept encouraging he will be listening to the word of God but time and chance a season just came brothers and sisters supernaturally he got a job too he got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna state within how many months Aaron that the, within two months they moved him to go and head a unit in Joss. Now he heads a unit in Joss. And we are only counting. See. I think there's one of our ladies here. Two of our ladies that I know. The moment they graduated.
they've not even served they just call them to get jobs you may not value what you are receiving don't let anybody fool you and make you think you are wasting your time a day will come the price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future you are already paying it now you may look like a fool some of you as you are going back home now they will insult you and say we are not seeing the fruit it does not yet appear but time and chance will reveal that i'm not praying in tongues for nothing hallelujah this year let me give you the last story and then we'll pray this year i was in ibadan we were, we all went to ibadan and when we went they lodged us in one of the best hotels there and it was Yerima, victor and um Sam, they sent me a text in the afternoon. They said we are swimming and we are enjoying. And then I looked through my window. They were playing table tennis. They were swimming. You know, they were enjoying themselves. All snapping and enjoying. And I looked. And then I remember the story. That same hotel, listen. In 2007, I went to that same hotel for something. But I could not pay for any room because it was very expensive listen to me i still had the anointing but time and season had not come i went there i still saw the arrangement i sat down there there's the reception there brothers and sisters i was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil it was a friday night so i will attend the night vigil because i had no money if i touch anything i will not have my transport back are you hearing what I'm saying? That same hotel. Somebody would have looked at me and said, Oh, what failure. Hiya. Mistake. Big mistake. You don't need to respond to those who think you are failures. Because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers. And the devil says, See, tell him, No, you see. Just keep watching. Time. Time. Time yes you may have an extra year write it and move and thank god because in that extra year you are still moving ahead see if a plane is moving forward even if you go back to the rest room you are still moving forward because the plane carrying you is moving forward i stayed that night till morning no bathing no nothing and a few years later there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state we came and we sat with this woman we are still going back i think some sometime towards the year we are still going back to our place again this woman was astonished the things that god did in in ibadan was amazing the woman followed us to our hotel room and we kept talking till almost i think to 12 or past 12 and she brought she said she must show her husband her husband is one of the top police people praise god and she they recorded everything me prophesying and praying for her and she said she must meet her husband and she just brought out a check i think a check of thirty thousand or something she said sorry you man of god this is small but can you take this i said oh lord time and chance it's not like i prayed more i just kept doing what i was doing it when when your season comes the same thing you did that did not produce result will now produce amazing results there are miracles that happen in koinonia here that if we were on air people will already start traveling but time and chance don't worry a day will come stop trying to announce yourself there are many people on air getting millions of naira they don't have up to half of sam's anointing continue what you are doing time and chance a day will come God will arrange your destiny help us in front then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayers that's the day God will announce you in 10 minutes what the Spirit of God will do you will have more than 20 invitations come for our conference come for this you are reading business books you are preparing yourself it looks like you're a fool there's nothing working no office only knowledge people even call you big head don't worry a day will come unto none of the widows was was um was elijah how did he put it now was the prophet sent except that widow of sarafah 
But the question God is asking you tonight before we pray. When the season comes, when the season comes, are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm? Will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Or will you contend? They may be seeing the brother and sister praying and they say, hey, you could know what you are doing. Don't worry. You don't need to answer anybody. Just keep praying. Seasons. A day came we were doing this same thing, but it was at the back of chapel. No Facebook to capture the picture and show the world that there is the hand of God upon these people. But a day will come. So I stopped focusing about cars, nonsense, house. No. Leave all those things from today I'm teaching you. When you sit with friends and they say, oh boy, where now? Where will our level change? Just know that they are wasting your time. Time and chance it never announces to you that the day is coming you will just sleep in the prison one night and by the second night you are in a palace you cannot account for what brought me here oh i believe it for somebody i believe it for somebody let me bring a word for somebody you may be going through certain things you are killing the lion in the secret nobody knows you are killing the bear nobody knows a day will come god will put you in front of goliath and it will be in the presence of all israel on that day saul will know that there is a david some of you have anointings today that if it's to be revealed the world will run away don't look for premature manifestation let me tell you service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself you see all these things people say i won't play keyboard till they pay me you are being foolish you can serve now and they give you prayers and you make blunders at least the mistake was made in jerusalem before you now get to judea and samaria and make blunders there make the mistake here sing and go off key here we will laugh at you alone and we'll tap your back there are mistakes that great men don't make in the open no make it here make it here sharpen that knife who is god speaking to tonight because i sense in my spirit that we are at the edge i cannot tell you trust me i'm not speaking nonsense i know it in my spirit i've been telling you this for days i have been fasting and preparing for these seasons i have i have picked the signal that believers in this side of god's kingdom there is a dimension of there is a shofar that will blow in this season and let me tell you warriors will arise this i call it the zaria experience we will reproduce this thing in this country many people do not know what god is doing in this side of the kingdom you just finish your school wear your convocation gown or sit back a day will come god will say your season in zaria is over it's time to move like arrows like arrows in a man's quiver he will send you you will wreak havoc across the seven mountains that day will come pay the price now forget the name you don't need to be called an apostle or pastor or prophet it's irrelevant settle down hallelujah that's why see listen let me tell you one secret about my life i shared it with the school of ministry students you never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly no if you see me around there was something to do you never that you are walking on the street you just see me jumping around and say eh, corn or maize which one is hot no i'm preparing for such an extraordinary life i want my life to match the visions that i've seen in the spirit call me apostle thank god for the healings i won't be deceived i want to carry the word of the lord with such a razor sharp accuracy so i will stay in the presence i will fast i will pray let me be lean today no problem it doesn't kill 
it doesn't kill prayer doesn't kill don't be a fool the suffering of the future is what kills the price today doesn't kill there's no job instead of praying and lamenting be preparing and say i know a job will come the day they do that interview they won't just give it job they will promote me at once because they will say where have you been rise up on your feet my spirit is fired up please jump up on your feet i like you to begin to blast in tongues instrumentalists come up everybody come on from the depth of your spirit do it for your future time and chance happens to you a day will come your season of appearing your season of appearing don't be tired don't be tired man of god don't be tired woman of god don't be tired prophet of god don't be tired apostle of god don't be tired keep pressing sharpen the anointing sharpen the skill sharpen the gift my season of appearing is coming they may victimize me today but time and chance time and chance time and chance hallelujah 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 the next prayer point i'd like you to pray and say lord i receive the capacity to build listen if you can't just pair yourselves into two find a brother or sister that is ready to pray and say lord in the name of jesus i receive grace to build to sharpen that ability as I wait for that day, come on, pray, Koinonia. Shake it for God to break a day. Shake it for God to break a day. The day will come. The day will come. Hey! 
Prepare for the season. Prepare for the opportunity. They will come. They will come. They will come. They will come. Prepare for it. Hallelujah. And thou will increase my grace and comfort me on every side. Listen. Listen. The third prayer point. You are going to attack every spirit, listen, of premature manifestation and distraction. Many of us want to be known. It's not fair. I'm anointed. Give me prayers to pray. I'm anointed. Put me on the stage. Nonsense. Stephen remained here serving tables. But the anointing was too much for tables. You are going to pray. Listen. There are many of us. You cannot delay gratification. You want to buy the shoe now. You want to buy everything now. You see people standing. And you say I must buy this kind of shoe. I must buy this kind of watch. Oh glory. The word is working. You better keep quiet. And pray. Prepare for the season. Read the books. Read books on fatherhood. Read books on leadership. Read books on ministry. Sharpen yourself. When you are tired. And it's 12 o'clock. Or 1 o'clock time to pray. When you are tired. Remember your destiny. Drag yourself up. I'm tired. It's true that I'm tired. But for the sake of my destiny. I do it to correct the errors. Of the fathers, I do it to correct the limitations of my family. Hallelujah! 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 Listen. Anytime you see a nice jeep. Go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you. A day will come when God permits us and we start translating koinonia messages to books. I tell you, some of them will be bestsellers, but until that time comes. Let's keep preaching the cutting S messages. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Listen. Immediately we play these two prayer points. There are people here who need to surrender totally to Jesus. The moment we pray those two prayer points, as we round up the last one, I just want you to come out here quickly. Because this is serious business. I don't need to cajole you. You need to surrender your heart. That you want to say, Lord, truly everything. So make sure when that time comes, we're going to pray. We're going to pray this prayer point. Hallelujah. And you're going to say, Lord, all the resources, all the materials, all the components I need to expose myself to, in preparation for that season bring them to me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray all the trainings all the books all the papers 
All the catering schools, all the fashion schools, all the business schools, all the business schools, all the ministry training, all the degrees you need to get. All the qualifications, all the leadership traits that you need for this new season that is coming, receive grace, pay the price, find the truth. Hallelujah. So, sister, rather than praying and say, There's no husband, why don't you sharpen yourself and say, The man that talks to me will know he spoke to a treasure. When you are going around doing all kinds of nonsense, there's no man coming. This koinonia brother said they are not seen. Why don't you sharpen yourself? Brothers, rather than sitting down, all these ladies don't like me. Are you serious? What are you doing for your future? Show me the investments you are making to be an extraordinary man. Last prayer point. Lord Jesus, hold my hands in this destiny and take me until I become great. Oh, Lift your voice and pray. Hold my hands. Hold my hands through the rain, through the storm. Lord, when I want to give up, encourage me. When the pressure gets too much, let me hear the voice of the Spirit. Hold my hands the hand of the Rubabel that began this war that same hand that same hand hold my hand hold my hand when I'm almost giving up hold my hand when I'm almost falling hold my hand when it looks like the weight is too long hold my hand when I'm about to give up on destiny hold my hand when the husband is not coming hold my hand when the job is not coming hold my hand when the miracle seems to be delayed hold my hand Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can choose to remain at the level you are forever by giving excuses. Or you can take the hand of God and say, Lord, I'm on your side. I don't care what men say. Let them criticize me. I will still be moving. I don't care well. They may misunderstand me. Why are you always praying in tongues like a fool? No problem. Is it only books you will keep reading? Don't you visit friends? No problem. When the season of appearing comes, the brothers of Joseph that looked down on him they were the ones who now came joseph said i saw the sun i saw the moon i saw 11 stars bowing to me those who criticize you they will bow it's only a matter of time hallelujah i bring a word of hope to somebody The issue in your life right now does not come to kill you. It is the making of great men. There is no money in your pocket. 
Some of you have been preached to think that it's because you don't have faith. It's because you have faith. Every time you pray for the throne, a Goliath comes. When you see a Goliath, don't cry, start smiling. That's a sign that a new season is before you. The presence of an enemy always ends your current season and opens up a new season for you. If there are no enemies in your life, I'm afraid of you. May your life not be so ordinary that your enemies ignore you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, 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 faithful. Do this and you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key, I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's alright. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation. The Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people, Christians and unbelievers alike, should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power, Luke 10, 19, to tread upon serpents 
and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me, Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read, um, let's look at a scripture, Mark. Mark 6. We'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly. Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12. Read on, please, it's projected. And did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? On clean spirits. On holy spirits. Spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities, uh -huh. powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirits advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and the Bible. He was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? The desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh. Two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession, but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries. Because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God, but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her. And based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, oh the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my... That is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God. For correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carried them. 
Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you, you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried, I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me. Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly and they are flying out of you, flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, wife is well, both of you go to the hospital, they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. Alright, take in madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take in. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part. Movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need result. It's your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore holding forth the shield. 
Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And he said, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do, the conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtained a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report. You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Stay after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit. Will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in. There were people in Abuja. My Bible. Uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are at in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me. I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. Every anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace. Every spirit. Every dimension. Tonight, you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God, I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are ease in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, Tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost 
that God would deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every strong bone shall be broken. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you but your family are we together and once that happens know that the time has come you pray it and declare that deliverance lift your hands I want to pray now father you brought us here to change lives change testimonies Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, shaka patakata, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now. Inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. Shabatakarataya. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft inside outside is over is over is over is over i come with a word of prophecy i prophesy as i've been commanded miracles deliverances for families enough is enough oh god bring them 
There are so many people outside. So many people outside. All the overflows. I see miracles. It's like fire. It's like fire. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. I'm seeing fire. And it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now, all over the congregation. I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption. A volcanic eruption. Coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, take it Where you are. The fire will meet you there. Where you are. Where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances, eating up joy, eating up peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars. 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 At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars, catch fire. Altars, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now, I pray the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Failure, failure, failure. Causing failure in lives. Failure in destinies. Failure in ministries failure in business failure in academics every form of failure fire is coming on it right now fire is coming on it right now inside outside no you can't stand it 
is your deliverance, is your word, is your prophecy, is your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains, and the Lord is saying, Let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot, inside and outside? At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all times, of all times. Harato Soto Peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord I pray. My God. I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft. Every manipulation. I cause it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus' name, at the count of three, fire from the throne, fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, go, go. Go, go. Go now. Leave their 
bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ay, ay, ay. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates. 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 Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Tapataya. Gates. Be broken. Gates. Be broken. Gates. Be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail. A programming to be barren. Who is this God that can look into time? Wherever they are, at the count of three, may the power of God fish them out. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. I open your destiny. Every lady, every sister, you are a gate. You are a gate in the realm of the spirit. Mighty deliverance. Mighty breakthrough. Mighty breakthrough. Mighty breakthrough. It's over. It's over. It's over. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Over. 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. Is a, is, is a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, 
stopping his advancement at the count of three some of you will be very surprised that fire will come on you are you ready now one two three take it take it take it that fire help them please help them my goodness Kaparata kata. brothers are coming under this unction it's time to move forward it's time to move forward help them i cost that spirit i cost that spirit i cost that spirit hallelujah god does this all the time and i don't know why god is doing this again <laughs> ah If he did it before, he can do it again. Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Eastern Ants. Eastern and evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east. Get set. Be sensitive. Come on. You shouldn't be doing that. Eastern and Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised. To see what will happen to you now. The spirit of God goes to the east. The spirit of God goes to the east. And is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance. By the power of the Holy Ghost. He's visiting your soil. Visiting your foundation. Visiting your soil. If he did it before. He can do it again. Same God back then. Same God right now. If he did it before, Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving. Across Apia, miracles breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region. Right now, Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. From Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna. Connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars 
in southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. of the spirit I found it working in my life is powerful God just calls a territory and everyone is like a digital spiritual system it's not something you just do by guesswork it's the spirit of God the spirit of God the spirit of God God is still touching Kaduna people I'm still hearing it in my spirit God is still touching Kaduna people there's no escape any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state hallelujah please lift your hands while still pray I want to pray for students now something miraculous will happen here now I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances I'm going to pray but there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Results, results. Carry of us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally. By the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. I bring it under fire. I bring it under fire. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands.
your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hand. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hand. Father, at least 17 people. Inside, outside, there are up to five people online. Supernatural jobs. May the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now. Right now, right now. Right now, receive it. Receive those letters in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. For you, for your loved ones. I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now. An anointing will come upon you. To signify what he's doing to them. Lord go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But um, there are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women particularly. One of them, the anointing of please no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. That devil, let her go. Don't disturb us, don't waste our time. Out! Out now! Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are living, release our family, release our destiny right now. The noise maker, out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen, we are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here, the two of them here, there's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them, the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one place we have such people we have to be fast if i mention your case once we give you one minute there's no response we have to move so that god can help us please except if they are outside there then that's all right the married women that need the fruit of the womb we have to pray for them right now praise the lord how many of us are trusting god for healing miracles in our bodies let me see your hands I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is stand up. Come on down. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 
years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You and you decided to. Where is your husband? Okay. okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I receive. This God, ba. Let me tell you. That is, that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. Want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger. In this equation. Please come sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit. Refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit. Refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes I want to pray. Please put your hand just Watch what happens to you. <sighs> There is a name, oh. There is a name. There is a name. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers. Kabataya. What God has joined together and prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are putting in her stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who 
is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one? Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. I will cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. come out at will. What's, hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in other embouchure. Kigiamata. Is that the same we embu? Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Mm. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See? This thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on, not not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen, <laughs> just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out it's a disaster. For a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry, and get married, and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21, and this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle. For this miracle. For this miracle. Daddy, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher. 
but you are praying come let God answer your prayers this lady is talking to the Lord what was the issue it's my sister you are asking the Lord to do what later she have put to bed in time but none of them is alive because I'm seeing a spirit as soon as she's giving birth this is like an antelope it eats the children as in, is the child, sometimes most of the children will grow nine months, you give birth, then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is, I want to pray for you. Mama, good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor, Victor. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job. The one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, yes, sir. this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So yes. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, he want to marry. He's want planning to... for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's alright. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. Yes, sir. You bend down to wash, and your back is pain. Exactly. Thank you, Father. In the I name of that. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help, Mama, Thank you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you. Please, don't, who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trousers removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Maybe we should help him now. <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? The proprietor of his school. Pastor and civil engineer. You own a school? Yes, sir. Primary school? Nursery and primary. Nursery and primary. Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school. Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. And they are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. 
you will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then you want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, few months, they want to leave. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madam from State. You are a student here? Dark. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son or so. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that he's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you, you see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir, it's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you, that he's going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. Honestly, I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in Musa. Have you started serving? In a place where? In the state of Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. From where? Zaria. I said, Sam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Yeah? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Hi. John. John, look at me. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? It's when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I change your house, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English. I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you, and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. I born me on 66. 66. 1966. How old is that? 50 years. This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. And um, this thing started happening to you since you were about 17 years. Abune Afara Miki. Yes. About 17 years this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. 
Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you're serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate every gate Over my finances. Over every area of my life. Be open now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I will see prophesied upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. Preservation out. Sha 
Rabakapara Toto Soto Pregadesh. No arrow of witchcraft is permitted to fly over my life. outside. Don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say in the name of Jesus. How about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. September. September. October. October. November. November. December. Hear my voice. I speak to you. Deliver to my life. Only blessings. No pain. No sorrow. No regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth. You shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus I declare a covering over me and my family members wherever they are the seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy. Listen I shared some months ago hold on. I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. 
Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your bread be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children. Some for breakthroughs. Some for study um, scholarships. Others for help. Others for reconciliation. Others for souls. Others for financial prosperity and breakthrough. Others for restoration. Some for deliverance. Others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names. We have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man. And turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen, most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. 
those who know this that is their edge in the spirit have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives those who are careless about it like they are about many other things never really get to receive anything let me tell you even if it's an impartation even if it's a dimension of breakthrough for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online connect connect distance is no barrier in the spirit It says you have turned my mourning into dancing and you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands whoever is not doing anything here because God said be fruitful I don't care whether it's a job a business I don't care whether you're a student a graduate a retiree whoever is having an idle hand between now and September miracle service I put something in your hand I put something in your hand I put something in your hand in the name of Jesus Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought you breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God but there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear him not just believe him I prophesy to someone here in the name that is above all names that flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear receive it in the name of Jesus Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here. And it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next, next month's miracle service, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring results, bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place that you have done everything to do including giving money to people and they have not brought jobs to you I don't know how God will do it but this mountain mover that can shake every mountain 
I pray, may he give you not just a job, a miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here that is stuck in one place, you try to rise, something brings you down. You try to rise, something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you the grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life, it works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus, in a way you have never seen favor and help, may you experience that throughout the month of September. Hallelujah. A dimension of anointing, a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you. Everything that needs to be broken in your life. Habits and encumbrances that tie you down. I command that today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify, I curse that spirit right now. 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 Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You will try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you. This month as we round up this month into the next month keys that your hands have never held spiritually hold them right now in jesus name keys mysteries that you have not known or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle may god give it to you in the name of jesus hallelujah finally this is the prayer that i pray for people with all my heart he said you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, right? And then he say, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor, the spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity, not by working it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place, uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked, they said, Ah, 
we, you have been blessed by your teachings you know God has lifted us you can imagine the things that have happened and they say which laptop are you buying and all of that and I looked at them I had to just run away and go out because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business they carry something that is so costly and cheap. let me tell you honor is more than money oh. don't be deceived money is very finite honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you they rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you, the true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know, the devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble. You pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension... Receive that mantle of honor. 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 Keep standing everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretched the time quite um, but I think that it's worth it. If you pay that much price and you come back with tear some testimonies, it's a wise baguette. There are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming quickly, please. hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god 
they run away from God. So that you are here in his presence. Some of you are rededicating your life. Some of you are doing so for the first time. It doesn't matter what category. I want you to lift your right hand. Please, if you are still coming, join them very quickly. Lift your right hand and say after me very clearly. You are not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe in you. That you died for me. To prove your love for me. And now I give my heart to you. To prove my love for you. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have your details in a minute and then dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, Grant me the discipline.